Louis Butcher soldier in Takradi. Mm. Killers on the run, angry officers threaten retaliation. Also on the front page of the Chronicle, church takes over labor office, court orders former NCA bosses to open defense, and NAPCO reduces graduate joblessness in Cape Coast. Those are the stories on the front page of the Chronicle newspaper. The finder has that particular story on the NCA on the front page as the banner headline. There's one about job fair opens employment opportunities for over 15,000 people. What, 1,500? Yeah, no extra zero. Now, introduce regulatory regime to control arms in Ghana, CDS to government, and six Ghana missions abroad issuing passports that's on the front page of the finder this morning the gold street business has six oil exploration blocks up for grabs in voltarian basin bidding may start next year two blocks reserved for gmpc producer inflation remains flat in april at 7.1 percent back page of the gold street business Kweku Awachi promoted as executive vice president of Talo Oil PLC and Casa Preco wins outstanding alcoholic beverage company. Congratulations, Mr. Awachi. Absolutely, yes. He's a, he's a big man. He's very, very big. The Herald is reporting this morning a Greek minister's boy fumbling at Opuni and Agongo trial as cross examination hits up and free expression demo leader attacked at home. There's one about Jujuske hitting the Bureau of Ghana Languages and Ayoko Bochoy opens Koforidia and Tema Passport Centers. Those are the stories on the front page of the Herald. The new crusading, the, the, the new weekend crusading oh. guide has <laughs> such a long name, right? We lied. 500,000 bribe was false. OKFM Nkrumah Tikesi and Kwame Amu apologized to Anas. CPP appoints Hajia Ibrahim as acting chairperson. Group to sue Charter House for stripping Shatawali Stone Boy yeah. of awards. That story is also on the front page of the Daily Guy, but this time around, they're stripping that to be reported. But Mahama confused, no hacking of 2016 results, and EC officer is the one saying so, and soldier charged for aiding voter secessionists. That's on the front page of the Daily Guy, too. The weekend today has who is holding locked up fans of customers? The question. The story comes with the photographs of Finance Minister Ken Ofuriata. Ban Shatawali Stone Boy, Prophet Computer Man says. That's on the uh, weekend today newspaper. Uh, before I move away from the Daily Guide, and it's what they call it, headline. You remember that yesterday I did a story. It did a story that uh, what they call it had as its headline specifically dictating that um, the AG takes on Joy FM over false reports. And the false was in quotes. Yes, this this false was in quotes. And the idea he sought to project was that um, the story, which is about a court case, we were actually peddling that particular false story in this particular case. And, 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 and Raymond, this is a story which we did on account of orders by the Supreme Court, the seven-member panel of the Supreme Court, hearing the case brought by uh, doc, uh, Dr. Dominica, in a former deputy chief, um, former deputy attorney general, um, contesting the, the constitutionality of the appointment of Martin Amidu on account of his age as special prosecutor. Now, we did a story on the orders and said that the attorney general and Mr. Dominic Hayine, the lawyer of Mr. Dominic uh, Tonelita, had been asked to file their defense yes. in the matter, especially the yes. attorney general. Now, the attorney general writes a letter saying, well, the orders, the specific orders were for them to fi um, file written arguments, written legal arguments, and not strictly defense. This is what the attorney general's letter um, was to us. So we did a correction on our story. And then on the back of that correction and that letter by the, which was signed by Godfrey Dami, who is Deputy Attorney General, Daily Guide goes to do this story. And I am surprised that our friends at Daily Guide, fortunately me, A.R. Gomda and all these guys, seem to be excited about taking us on. First of all, they took comments I made on the show completely out of context. And again, this uh, false was with a code. The comments are made in respect of the documentary. They said, we regretted the documentary. 
when clearly we did I not never regret said anything it. like but that. But it, it's good that we've been able to come out and clarify it and to all of our listeners out there, these are the facts as they stand. No, really. but the difficulty is that for a paper that has found the Takrade oh, girls yeah. and reunited <laughs> them with <laughs> their <laughs> family, <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> difficult. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, the family have not seen look, the, the trouble that you look for the other slogan. I'm saying that it's okay, I'm turning mics off. Ladies and gentlemen, I have turned the mic off. Let us finish No, I think that as media houses, there are a lot more problems for us to focus on on this in this society rather than focus on each other. Um, I think it's completely unproductive. Okay, okay let, let's I'll, I'll move on to the Ghanaian Times. But since you say I should not talk about who found the it's girls, okay. okay now the Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning. Let's smoke the peace pipe to end protracted litigation. This is the Global Evangel- uh, Evangelical Church and the EP Church. Now there's a story on Satawale and Stoneboy too, but Odinho. Kwafuako to the third actually has been affirmed as the paramount chief of Akwamu. And the, there's one about danger looming at the Kwame Nkrumah interchange as mm. illegal bus terminals spring up close to the rail track. And nine suspected Nigerian internet fosters have been let go. You just did danger looming, right? There's yes. also danger looming on the streets of Accra. Yeah. That's on the front page of the Daily Graphic danger newspaper. Everywhere. Pedestrians in danger as naked live wires, wires portend electrocutions. But also on the front page of the Daily Graphic, man heads for court over EC's online registration. I've not seen any MOU that's uh, corner of Mania Krobo. Court orders arbitration on Unibank. Back page of the Daily Graphic, Kwesi appear, Jan to smoke peace pipe. And Kotoko reach semis, Kotoko. Kumasi Asantu Kotoko reach semis of special competition. Hold Ediana 1 1 at Doma Hinkru. Instructive. Now, the Daily Statement is reporting this month that two yes, have been accused. Right. <laughs> two <laughs> have been accused <laughs> in. I pay you. He has no. a problem. I'm a retired <laughs> Kotoko fan. <laughs> so, I'm retired for retired Kotoko. <laughs> now, the Daily Statement is reporting this month that two accused in trip on the classes. They have been jailed. There's one about um, CPP national chairman resigning and the Nkrumah's party strategizes to regain glorious past. Mm. And that's in quotes on the front page of the Statement. Before we do anything else, me, I want to hear about these ganja boys. Daniel, it's a sad, sad story. The story which was filed by Kwesi Alfred Adams... Um, of the Chronicle newspaper from Takradi is that there was a clash between three military personnel from the Takradi Air Force Command with some suspected we smokers, India hemp smokers, at Asakai, a suburb of Takradi. I'm sure you know. Is Asakai. That a, Asakai, okay. Asakai. <laughs> you so go on it. It's a part Asakai. of Takradi. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part of Takradi. You yes. go on. So there was a clash between these three military personnel and, 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 and these guys. Unfortunately, it led to the death of one of the military personnel. The story is that the military personnel, who were not in uniform, by the way, went to the area to confront these persons because they snatched a mobile phone from a, a, a lady friend of one of the soldiers. Now, in the course of the confrontation, the, the suspected weed smokers picked cutlasses and they inflicted cutlass wounds on the soldiers. They rushed one of the soldiers to the hospital. Unfortunately, he was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. Now, the public relations officer of the regional police command, Olivia uh, Erabna Adiku, was the one who confirmed this to the Chronicle newspaper by telephone conversation and said that the persons who perpetrated this crime are on the run and the police are chasing after them. They believe that they will get them, they will arrest them, they will prosecute them. But... The fear is that the men and officers there are also threatening retaliation. And so there is anxiety in this area. And the DCE is, is making, and the DCE and the chief for the area are making interventions so that the military men will not go into town and retaliate. Yeah, we, we don't want another Tamale situation. To, seek to remember? avenge the death of, 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 mm. of the Apollo. Yes, yes. We remember when in the northern part of Ghana we had this clash. This time it was even between the police and the military. And I remember very well, sometimes the law enforcement officials, they take a stance, if I can use that expression, against the citizenry. And, and it's really sad. So this needs to be investigated. Yeah, so the MCE for Kusimin Tim Kujakwa is, is, is the one who is leading the processes to, to try and, and, and calm tensions so that there won't be any escalation as a result. But it's a, it's a sad one. A really, really sad one. It's also a dangerous one if soldiers decide to, decide, to secede. Mm. Now, yes, of course, and this is happening in the voter region. Remember our 
first the 81 secessionists who, who were rounded up after eight of them were put before court when they planned to do the May 9th declaration of, of independence, the oh, Western okay. Togoland grouping. Yeah. Apparently, they had help by a military officer. Wow. This military officer is called Sergeant Bogli Samuel Kobla. The suspicion was that the military officer was the one who was training the people attached to them who were going to form the police force and the military force of this particular grouping. But they claim they did not have a military force. That, that is what they said. The police in the region insisted that there were some grouping who were undergoing drills just suggested that they were okay. militia of a kind. And, and they were being trained by this side. Yes, and militia was accepted in those terms as the appropriate word anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> let me move on to the other important parts of this particular story. Now... The understanding they had is that this military man leaked information to many members of the group who were holding a meeting to plan the independence declaration on May 9th. In their hideout, he also told them to hide their weapons because the joint police and military team that were after them were going to search for those things. And if they found any of them, they would have been charged with more serious crimes. So you see how serious the act yes. of the military man is in this particular mm. case. So he's been put before court on the charge of treason. Okay. Again, yeah, he's also been, act, uh, of course, abetment's part of the charges that um, he's actually mm. been charged with. Mm. We know that originally, the eight were put before court on the charge of offensive conduct. That sounds like Shatawale and Stoneboy. <laughs> Conducive to the breach of peace. Clearly, one of the charges that both have been charged with. Of course, they were also charged with treason and, and also the abetment part has been dealt with in this case. We all know that the oldest and the leader of the group he's the founder of the homeland study group that is 85 year old retired educationist charles komi kujoji he was the one granted bail with 250,000 because really they felt the man was too old to be subjected to all of this and with some justification being done now we know that we, they went to court for the first time and they're also supposed to be going back to court and the rest have actually been making since then since they were they were appeared in court the first time. Yeah. We've not heard much from the group. We also heard that a group similar to this, calling it a youth organization in the voter region, held a press conference saying that they, their, their motive has been misconstrued. All that they demanded was a meeting with the president on the way forward in dealing with their issues. In fact, they insist that the constitutional state of the voter region under Ghana is illegal anyway. Hey, thanks, let's let's stay in court, um, shall we? We know the case that the state has brought against some five former uh, bosses at the National Communications Authority. Now, the Chronicle newspaper is reporting that a submission of no case was made before the court and the court ruled against the submission of no case and ordered the, 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 the five to file their defense. If I may just explain what the submission of no case is. Usually when a case is brought before, especially criminal cases are brought before a court, the prosecution has a mandate to adduce evidence to warrant the conviction or to establish their case against the person against whom they have brought the charges. Now, at the end of the submission of the case by the prosecution, usually defense attorneys would determine whether um, a prima facie case has been made or not. A prima facie simply means on the face of it, is there a case to answer by the suspects? If there is no case to answer, then they will submit what the lawyers call uh, submission of no case, just to tell the judge that, look, the prosecution has not been able to discharge the burden of proving beyond reasonable doubt that these persons committed the offenses that they are bringing against them. In some cases, the submission of no case is upheld if the judge believes that the prosecution has not been able to prove his case on the face of it. But in this case, Justice Eric J. Bafo, who is the High Court judge presiding over this matter, is of the view that no prima facie case has been established. And therefore, the five persons here, and let me just list them, they are the former board chairman, um, Mr. Eugene Bafo Boni. He's a former board chairman. There's William TV, who was a chief executive of the NCA at the time. There's Nana Owusu and Sao. He's, he's a board member. Al Haji Salifu, uh, Mimina Osman, formerly a deputy national security coordinator, and George Derek Opong, a businessman. The five of them are the persons who have been charged in respect of this case. The judge says all five of them, the, the prosecution's case has been made, a prima facie case has been established, and therefore they have to open their defense. Now, 17 of 15 of the 17 charges, according to the story, were all struck out. They were discharged and acquitted of 15 
of the 17 charges. The remaining two stand, and all these five have to open their defense in respect of that. But what does if, that mean in terms of the weight of the case if 70, 15 of the charges have been It means very out? little, actually. Oh, okay. It, it means very little because sometimes uh, there, are, there are substantive charges and there are minor ch uh, charges as well. Um, you can have... You can have one charge on the strength of the evidence adduced when you are convicted of it. It actually has so what are the remaining charges? So what is happening is that the the five the five uh, the lawyers who are lawyers for the five and these are Abu Juan Godwin Edugi Tamaklo, our friend Godwin Edugi Tamaklo, Samuel yes, yes, Kujo, yes. um, Bafu Gezi Jima, Asasi Jima, and then Randos Chimosi Ankara. These are the persons who made strong arguments, according to the story, arguing for the submission of low case, but Justice Eric Chiba for disagrees. So they will open their defense starting on the 30th May, and then they will go into the matters. The prosecution has already called six witnesses uh, to testify. Something is happening on the 30th. Yes, yes, yes. The Joy Business Health and Wellness Street Show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's on the 30th of May as well. So, yeah, it's a good date. <laughs> Every much. That's what we remember. <laughs> it's very worth remembering. Yes. And now, this bio teacher who has assaulted a student, what did the student do? Okay, so now the student is supposed to be a lover of the teacher. And this happened in Asaban Kese. So, who's the female, the teacher or the student? The, the man. Is the teacher okay? I mean, it hardly happens that a female teacher. Oh, but it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so Samuel Boachi Donko is alleged to be the lover of the student in this case. So the student on one of these occasions said she was uh, at that time of the year and that uh, she was not at that time of the month. Okay, so she was not in the mood to engage in their usual affair. Then the teacher got very angry and the teacher decided to assault the young virtually stripping her naked because he had given her money earlier this is what caught the attention of the people in the area who reported the matter to the Asamankesi um, district police and the teacher has been arrested now the girl said the reason why she had to detach from the teacher was that the teacher had another relationship with somebody who is a former student of the school the person had been threatening her life and so she didn't want to continue in a relationship which had threats coming from someone outside and that's why uh, she gave the excuse and it the teacher shouldn't be a relationship to get out of the in the first i'm sorry raymond i know you are, pre I get you, you are presenting a story i, I get but you but the, the teacher's uh, alias is uh, confusion obviously confused teacher confused about his role as a teacher and as a protector of his yes. students in the first place confused that he's not supposed to be engaged in a relationship confused that even if this person was not a student it's not his place to demand sex just because he's giving money confused that he's not supposed to touch a student or a female in the first place this man is really confused guys Please, let's move somewhere else. Well, can, can we do pedestrians in danger, Daniel? This is a sad story. And so the daily graphic story compiled by Daniel Kunedu Ajmai is that pedestrians in Accra are at the risk of suffering electrocutions because a number of street lights have naked live wires dangling on them across the capital. And this is not limited to one place. It's happening in many places. And the people who are at most risk are children and Daniel you just have to look at the front page of the daily graphic the photograph there you see school kids um, a, 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 a bigger boy holding the kid brother and the kid brother is holding the pole very close to the naked live wires the graphic reports that some of the live wires have actually been salutaped others are left completely naked and you can see the photographs that the paper has published Daniel electrocutions frighten me because three years, yes, three years ago, 11-year-old niece of mine died through electrocution. That's terrible. This innocent girl went to take a bath. She left her towel on um, some iron poles that had oh. been left by a welder. Now, there was a naked wire which was attached to a roof. Now, these poles somehow just attached to the roof then took current from the naked wire from the electricity pole and then all the metal poles on which this lady had put her her her, her towel were all charged so she took a bath just came there to pick her towel and then that was it this poor innocent girl 11 year old was electrocuted so when you see things such as this when you see open cables on the street 
it's frightening and but it's 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 a graphic illustration mm. of our lack of care it's Malik, first eloquent of all, I'm very testimony sorry. to to uh sometimes the nonchalant attitude we put to safety of, of ourselves. Mm. And I think that the authorities must, t- must take this seriously. First of Honestly. all, like I was saying, Malik, I'm very sorry. That's really sad. That has haunted the family, the family for years, about three wow. years ago. Please, please. You, you don't Painful. want to tell the story. You know, they say that uh, experience is the best teacher, but a wise man learns from others' experiences. That's so true. please learn from uh, Malik and his family's experience. On that note, we go on to our online news review and it's brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Now, you can make your day more productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle, your three-time CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP are additivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you are guaranteed extra quality with our fuel analyzer from our mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of Goyle's over 360 service stations and experience good energy. Buy Goyle, go Ghana. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. A gold night with Zenith Bank and have dinner on us at the plush African Regent Hotel. Now, isn't that exciting? To enjoy this offer, simply use any MasterCard to make a minimum purchase of 500 Ghana cities on a Zenith Bank POS as the African Regent Hotel and be rewarded with a free dinner or a discount of 100 Ghana cities on other meal options. Visit the African Regent Hotel today. Use any MasterCard on a Zenith Bank POS and have dinner on us. Go light with Zenith Bank, pay light. Zenith Bank in your best interest. MyJoyOnline.com has the Catholic Church remaining alert. Catholic Church remains alert to face security threats, as according to the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, Most Reverend Bonaventure, John Bonaventure Kofi. Uh, AIDS Commission criticized for ignoring potential HIV breakthrough cure. Africa News, this is from the Super Morning Show yesterday. Right? Yes, yes, this is from SMS yesterday. AfricanNews.com says Malawi to probe contested results. Um, Mutharika's VP loses parliamentary bid. Interesting end to that interesting election there in Malawi. Uh, BBC.com has an op-ed. Is Facebook undermining democracy in Africa? Wow. Critics are saying social media, the social media giant has allowed its platform to be weaponized for coordinated misinformation campaigns. This fake news saga is becoming... It's a good, good big. morning to four persons I came into contact with yesterday who are absolutely ardent listeners of the Super Morning Show. Angela Safu Kantanka, Kwame Adum Fanfu, Anthony Mba and Aisha Abdul Salam. Great, great, great listeners we have. I was impressed by the things that they say about the show. All four of them work with the Ghana Maritime Authority. Good morning to all of them. So, good morning to all of you. And my question to you, our lovely people who listen to us, is which would you choose if you're choosing a partner for marriage? Which comes over the other? Love or character? Listen. I'll choose character. Um, character of love because it's easier to love someone because of a good character. I think love is fleeting and it can dissipate over time but if your partner has gotten a character you don't like i think you would talk to the person to desist from their character i would choose character over love well that's the conversation we're having today zero two four four three four zero four three seven Ramon, you want to say something oh no i said why, both is, is possible. why are you raising your hand <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> <Choose one. laughs> we'll we'll be back we'll be back <laughs>